happening in Bridgeport with the arts. I want to thank Nina and Bill um, for creating this song. Um, I'll, I'll do it try to say pick up country. <laughs> <laughs> I know now it's not a Pokemon, so I'm not going <laughs> to say that anymore. Uh, um, but definitely, um, Bill, for all your support on getting this done. This is a challenge for me. I usually try to stay away from things that are so structured. So this is a challenge. So, um, All right, let's go. Grandma, I arrived at your doorstep. I could still see your face. My brother and sister were there by God's amazing grace. We stood like three little orphans at your doorway, clutching each other, wondering where we were and if we had to stay. Matching purple dresses for my sister Andrew and me, even though she's about six and I'm about three. My brother Tyson is in long pants with a white button down shirt. I met an older brother named Patrick and a cousin Steve. Their clothes were so old and dirty, their pants turned into skirts. Dirty little boys must have been strange because of where I was coming from, why it's still etched in my memory a half a century. But I was soon to be just as filthy. Long gone from my grandpa's home in Erie Castle by the sea, where I prayed on my paternal grandma's tombstone, had visions of her as I lie in the sun. But I never met her as she died long before I had begun. We arrived in Augustine up on a mountain you live. I don't remember where we were coming from, and for a long time I didn't care. I forgot about Erie Castle in St. Thomas and all the family left behind. I never questioned why. Could it have been the dragon style with condensed milk and egg given to a child before going to bed? The smell of 100 proof rum Christmas punch still lingers in my head. I think more it was because of the life of a child. I lived in the moment catching butterflies and looking up at the sky. I lived with you for what seemed like forever, but now I know it was but a few years until I was eight. When there was plenty to eat, there was plenty and even more treats. When there was nothing, you said, lay on your stomach and go to sleep. We didn't use alarm clocks to wake up with a, us up with a beat. The moon went down, the sun rose, and the cock crowed. We were in tune with the earth and the way we lived showed. Mountain rose high around us, the streams flowed, glistening water, tadpoles swimming, the sun scorched, tar burned, bare feet, walking to school, patent leather shoes with Barbie socks, safe the church on Sundays, pretty taffeta dresses with crinoline underneath, the winds blew, the rain fell, and made common music on the zinc top roof. How did I forget this and go on living so aloof? Told I would go to America in a plane. It felt like somewhere distant and strange, but my brain had no television to influence. I used my imagination to create a picture that the airplane would fly up to the sky, drop me off on the rooftop. I would have escaped the beating that was coming to me. My cousin Steve and I ate all the dumplings out of the chicken soup when we were expecting company. It embarrassed my uncle greatly. My cousin Steve was punished severely. Uncle Ivan cut him with, his, with the cutlass on his hand. I witnessed the torture. I knew when my turn came, nothing would escape my fate. My cuteness of shaking my frock tail and stomping my feet were wearing off. Uncle Ivan would show no more privileges of leftovers. Going to America and leaving my, my island of Jamaica couldn't have come any quicker. I would be on the rooftop and you could catch me, not this day. When you forgave me, I would come down and, you, and I would say I'm sorry, but the plane took me to a distant land and I would never return. I felt I had escaped my fate. And in my mind, Grandma, you, I have forgotten. I spent many decades never thinking of you, Uncle Ivan, Steve, Auntie Bobby, or Jr., the people that I knew from my big yard down the lane to Auntie's big house in Kingston. When I finally saw you, I expressed my anger. I thought it was from my heart. You saw in my face danger. I saw in your eyes concern and love. I know now I had spent eight years of unforgiveness, mad at you for sending me away. I thought you punished me for being bad that day. I remember the fury of you spanking me just one time. Once was too much, I felt betrayed. You sent me to the store and halfway there you forgot? You thought I had strayed? You kept me in the kitchen, always close to you. I learned you were keeping me safe. I learned how to clean and cook like you. I, sh I shined the pots with the ash. I did it so well, it wasn't for cash. Just being close to you was enough for me. First I was angry because I wanted to play, but now with awareness I cherish the moments 
You spared me that day until you heard my cry. Mom, you sent me to the store. I repeated in tears. You were so remorseful. You, had, you held me in your lap and comforted me. But my anger wouldn't forgive you. When you died, I didn't cry. My fury wouldn't let me feel for a stranger. For that, I suffered immensely. Seeking help, I was asked, how do you take care of your children so impressively? I was seeking help because of the childhood abuse I suffered in America. How could you abandon me and lead me to that fate? The children bullied me and said, go back to Jamaica on your banana boat. It didn't matter that my skin was the same color. They hated me and the days became torture. I went home and had responsibilities that weren't an eight-year-old's. You took care of me and I, now I take care of my mother's child. How did it all go so wrong? But that was the care that they asked me about. Bedtime stories to my children at night. A good bath and comfy bed to sleep in. The question asked, how do you take care of your children so well? That's when I remembered you. You came back into my mind. All that you did and all that you still do. Grandma, you're the only woman I could ever remember holding me. Grandma, you're the only woman I remember ever comforted me. Grandma, I remember your strength, working hard in the fields, cutting down banana stalks from the banana tree, swinging it from your back to the ground. Grandma, when I remembered you, I asked my cousin Bobby, did you think of me? He said, often, to think that you loved me and never forgot me, it warmed my heart. It released the pain of abandonment, the despair from disconnection. I remember the comfort from your red pea chicken soup. I still make it today when I want to connect back to everything that I knew. Grandma, I remember the care of you braiding my hair. I remember the Bible stories you recited to me before I laid my head to sleep. I remember the love from you singing Psalms 123 and 100 to me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I shall fear no evil, for thy heart is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I remember that your love was unconditional. I was lacking nothing, and I have you watching over me. Ten years had passed since you had died. Grandma, I remember you loved me dearly, and that's when I cried. Yeah. Thank you.